Welcome to Money Over 50. Today's topic, small business capital gains tax concessions. Dallas, I've wanted to do this one for a while and I've resisted that. I, I, uh, I know the feeling, Michael. I've been in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, one is it, it probably will only suit a small number of our yep. audience. Yep. Um, so we, we apologise in advance. If you don't have a small business, this this may not be interesting or it, it won't be relevant and may not even be of any sort of interest at I'm all. I'm sure there will be listeners out there that will still want to listen to this because yeah. it, it is quite interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've heard it referred to as the most generous yeah. uh, tax concessions in our in, 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 in our, our country. Yeah. And, I, and I believe that. I'd agree with that, yeah. I, 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 I certainly agree with that. So um, what it's really pitched around is is if you run a small to medium sized business mm-hmm. and uh, in the uh, it doesn't have to be that you're selling the whole business but it usually is mm-hmm. um, if you're selling the business closer to your retirement yeah. uh, for for a lot of people um, the capital gains number one the capital gain that is incurred from selling your business and we'll go into some examples there yeah. uh, is disregarded yeah. Uh, up to very very generous limits. Yes. And and number two, the second benefit of that is that you can actually get a much much larger amount, including up to the entire sale proceeds, yep. into your superannuation fund. Yep. Which, by the way, is exactly where you want yes. to end up with that money. I was going to elaborate where you go. It's not, there's nothing magic about getting it into super, but if you've been listening to this podcast for any extended period of time, you would you would have heard us talking about the different earnings tax rates in retirement mm. and how super can be really advantageous. And so, mm. yeah, that's that's exactly right. I guess a great place to start. Those are the really the two benefits, and the two sort of separate benefits is that you know, both around minimising tax. The first one is that you're minimising capital gains tax. So potentially can be completely disregarded and, and not pay any CGT on on the sale of your of your of your business, uh, and we'll go into other types of sales that that can work here. And secondly, as you said, you can get much more of that compared to normal into superannuation. The earnings tax on that is is likely to be far less than mm. than the amount that would you would incur if you then had that in your own name and had to invest in your yeah. own name. So. Um, did you want to get started on? Well, on we use some examples. So there, are, there are there, there are plenty of of pass throughs as well. Yes. And what I mean by that is is is, is key conditions that you need to meet. Yeah. Now they're not entirely difficult conditions to meet. No. However, there is quite a few of them. So yeah. so let me just preface this with we're not going to get through everything <laughs> this today. Is, this is why we've resisted doing. This is why we've resisted it's, doing it's, it. It is very involved, and so do not. I mean, there's always the warning at the start of this, but do not take yeah. this as personal financial advice. Everyone's situation, there are, there are, like you say, there are about 10 different boxes that need to be ticked for every different variation of the strategy. Mm-hmm. And if you don't tick every box, it, it can you can yeah. come unstuck. So this is just, like I said, we'll give a few examples to give people a bit of an idea of what's out there and what's available. But if, if you think this is relevant to you, um, you know, you really need to look at this and based on your it, situation. It's a situation to do uh, much more research yeah. after yeah. after this, and we'll talk about where to go to mm-hmm. to, to get that research. But but basically, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's one of those things. If if some of these examples um, are similar to your situation, and you're yeah. running a small to medium business, yep. then um, and you're thinking of obviously selling it at some stage, which which most people do yep. uh, when they. You know, approaching retirement, yeah. then um, then certainly this could be uh, uh, it, it's it's a significant tax saving. It's yes. a significant planning tool that we use with our clients who are in that in that That's situation. Right. Yeah. So first of all, look, it has to be what's called a, an active asset. Yes. Uh, so a capital gains tax asset is an active asset if it's used in the business of the owner and affiliate. A spouse or a child under eighteen or a connected entity. I mean, most of the case, it's yeah. it's it's just used by the owner. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's either a yeah. um, your business you run it as a sole trader or a partnership. It yeah. can be a company. It can yeah. be a trust. It yeah. can be all of those things. Uh, the the key to this is that it has to be an active asset. It has to be run in, in connection with a with a business, basically. And um, so common active assets are you know, business goodwill. So that's the the my my business on the. On, on paper is worth yeah. you know, not much, yeah. um, but yeah. what its saleable value is yeah. is much higher because yeah. 
it's got X amount of profit each yep. year. So that is a CGT asset. You would yep. pay capital gains tax on that if you sold the yep. business. Um, that's an active asset. The business premises yep. is an active asset. So so if, you, if you're building that, you run uh, the business out of, that is also an active asset. And what are, what are also assets or active assets are depreciating assets such as plant and equipment. That's a good one yeah. because if you buy a truck, if you're in a trucking business, yeah. you buy a $100,000 truck, what happens is you claim depreciation on that, on that truck every year. Um, this is a simplified example, but, but yeah. you know, if that depreciation rate – Accountants might shoot me down here. It used to be twenty two point five percent, I believe. It's <laughs> um, uh, uh, so yeah, and the truck in the first year loses on paper twenty two and a half thousand dollars. Yes. Now the value over time of that truck down goes to, down to zero. Yeah. Uh, you sell, sell the truck for you know fifty thousand dollars, for example. Um, that's a capital gains tax event, and you would normally pay tax on okay. that sale. Yeah. So, so so business goodwill, these are the common ones. There are more than this. Yep. There's business premises yep. and then there's depreciating assets such so, as planning and equipment. So, so I think this is probably a, a good uh, opportunity to things that things that aren't, that mm. don't meet the criteria. You know, if you just own an investment property, um, yep. for example, uh, whether that's a, a residential property that you own and then you sell that, that's it's not an active asset. It's not held no. in connection with a, with a, with a business. Um, it's not used in the running of the business. Um, that's the case even if you have, um, even if you own a commercial property, mm. but it's leased to a third party. It's not. It's not used in. If, if you have I, a business, I have, yeah. I have an unbelievable example oh, here. Beautiful. So, <laughs> uh, so a, a prospective client came to see me the other day. Yeah. Uh, someone that I've known for some time. They have two blocks of land. Yeah. So right beside each other. Yeah. One is rented out to a another business yep. so that would be counted as a passive asset mm-hmm. um, uh, the other block is used in the business yep. for um, like all the business area. related yep. purposes so um, essentially to to um, yeah in the carrying on of the business it's a it's a trucking business yep so uh, he has an offer for sale um, an offer sorry an offer to buy these blocks of land they're about a million dollars each and they were bought for about a hundred thousand dollars each some time ago. So, um, two very different assets here. The active assets, the block that's used for business, mm-hmm. on a million dollar sale, there's a nine hundred thousand dollar capital gain. So, um, uh, meaning the exemptions that we'll get to later on, the nine hundred thousand dollar capital gain is disregarded in this situation because it's an active asset of the business so it's used in connection with running the business um so effectively that capital gain is firstly disregarded which we said was a obviously yeah. a good thing yeah so, so benefit number one is they just don't pay that capital gain they tax. just don't pay any capital gains tax on that capital gain yeah. secondly is that they can actually put the capital sale proceeds not just the capital gain they yeah. can put into superannuation the full million dollars so the four million dollars can go into superannuation right before they're ready to retire this which is as we just said before and we've we've yeah. a recurring theme of our yeah. um over a hundred podcasts so far as that's, that's where you want, where you want your, your assets to, to end up. Yep. So that's the second benefit. You can actually get that money in. It doesn't come under the standard non-concessional contribution caps, yep. which are you know still a hundred thousand dollars a year at the moment. Yep. Like so, so it's not caught up under that. Yep. You can get a large whack of money into superannuation. Mm. The block next door that's been rented out, and its 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 sole purpose is only ever be to, to be rented out. Mm-hmm. Um, same, virtually the same sale price, a million dollars, same capital gain. They bought it for about the same amount. So um, what happens now is that because it's a passive asset and it's not used in connection with the business, yep. it was just used to, 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 to be a, a passive investment and get rent from, the $900,000 capital gain on that, on that passive sale yep. on the block next door is um, capital gains tax assessable. Now they've owned the block for longer than twelve months, so that is half. The nine hundred thousand dollar capital gain is half to four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. And they're a husband and wife; they're set up as a partnership. But what happens is that uh, 
four hundred and fifty thousand dollars gets goes to them as taxable income. Yep. Uh, so it's as if they've earned four hundred and fifty thousand so dollars. So there's nine hundred thousand dollars capital gain. They get the fifty percent twelve month discount. So there's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of worth of income that flows through to them personally as a, as partnership. As partnership. So uh, effectively. Um, it, uh, yeah, two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars of taxable income per person, and um, the tax that they would pay at standard marginal rates of tax is seventy-six thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars in tax each. So together, it's it's just a little bit under one hundred and fifty-three thousand dollars of total tax. So you can see. Same Two asset. very different. Yeah, so basically exactly the same assets. One's one's a one's an active asset. One's not yeah. an active asset. Yeah. And the tax bill is is either one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or zero dollars. It's a, it's a, it's a big difference. And and part two. And part two of that is that it now becomes difficult for them to get all of that money into superannuation. So they've sold a block for a million dollars. The pa- uh, the passively rented block. Mm-hmm. Um, they've lost one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars in tax, yep. and that's left them with eight hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. It, it it can be hard um, to get that money into superannuation for them. Now these guys will be will be able to get some of that money in, um, but in the first example, it's 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 uh, of the active asset, a million dollar sale, capital gain of nine hundred thousand dollars, disregarded because they meet the fifteen year exemption. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little minute, and, and that money can go straight into superannuation mm-hmm. as well. So, so it's a double whammy yes. if it counts as an active asset. Capital gains is dis- disregarded, saves them in this case a hundred an extra hundred and fifty three thousand dollars in tax. Yeah, because uh, that's what they paid on the on the, the the identical block, except that it was being yeah. rented out yeah. over that period of time for passive income. Uh, yeah, it saves them one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars in tax, and also they can get the money into superannuation as yeah. well. So they basically they, they pick up that huge tax saving as the one off, and then in addition to that, they've got a higher amount. They've got the full million dollars inside super. We won't go into all that in detail, but obviously, if they if they're going to retire, potentially they can move that into an account based pension mm. and pay no tax on the earnings on that money ever again. So they pay yeah. no tax on the capital gains no tax on the earnings on that money compared to the passive uh, asset. They're left with 850000 and then the earnings on that are added to their taxable income each yep. year potentially. Yep. So, yeah, that's... I mean, like we said, what we we could have gone into great detail in, in, in this podcast about all sorts of different strategies and the rest of it, but I think that's a really good example of the really the benefits uh, of this and, and mm-hmm. showing... You know the the twofold effect of that minimising the capital gains and yep. and being able to get more than normal into super. Yep, and and it's available for for all businesses now. You do have to meet some turnover tests here, which we'll go through. Yep, uh, and farms as well. So farming is yep. a common one here, Dallas. Yes, that you yes, that is. you I've, see. <laughs> I've done this a few times. It's uh, it's a very very handy one for the for the cattle farmer. Yeah, so. Um, some other basic eligibility that needs to occur, um, number one, that a, a capital gains tax event has occurred and a gain would have resulted, um, which is which is standard most of the time. Uh, the asset meets the active asset test, so, so that's a fairly broad test. It's just that the active asset, to be an active asset, it had to be used in connection with the the, the 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 business the so yeah. um we won't i won't digress too much there's been a court case that's gone through <laughs> recently where um yeah. uh a a uh eichmann had a um he was a builder and had a block of land yeah and used only part of it uh as 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 uh in connection with his business mm. uh for a period of time so um uh I said I wasn't going to digress, no. but, 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 <laughs> but, but no, 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 there, there is an update coming with that. But, yeah, but, but, and, but, but basically, I, the court, the the, um, the federal high court, I think it was, had ruled in favour with yeah. with him as the taxpayer, as opposed to the ATO. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of case law with with this whole area, and that's kind of mm. what we talked about. It is it is a bit of a grey area. A lot of definitions of things are. 
you hear a lot about um, people who are doing this. They'll go to their accountant and get a private ruling because it's not black and white as yeah. to, you know, is this an active asset? Is it not? Well, some bit of it might be, some bit might not be, you know. Has it, is it in connection with their retirement? Well, what does that mean? And what does retirement... Yeah. Like, there's all sorts of... Every, every sort of step along the way, it's a bit of a grey area and you, and you sort of have to be able to... Um, work out or decipher what that actually means yeah. and then whether you meet that criteria. So like we said, it, it is a real area where, you know, you do want to you do want to get it right and, and I do have heard of a lot of people that go and get private rulings from the mm. ATO around this and, and yep. make sure that they do meet all the criteria before you, you go ahead. So yep. um, the the other one under a basic eligibility condition is that only one of the following applies. So there has to be a two million dollar uh, maximum turnover test mm-hmm. of the the entity, yep. uh, or a six million dollar maximum net asset value test of of uh, the entity or the the shareholders. Now it's only one of the two. Yep. So, for example, if the business was turning over two point five million dollars a year, mm-hmm. um, however, they looked at the the in this case, let's just keep it simple. It's a partnership between husband and wife. And that their um, net asset value test was less than six million dollars, then they would they would um, uh, they would they would qualify. They would qualify here. So it's one or the other. Now, um, so either under two million dollars of turnover for the entity, and entities, I guess, the correct word because it, it could be a company yep. or it could be a trust as well. Um, and and um, under six million dollars net yeah, see, asset yeah. value test. Uh, so it's one of the following. Mm-hmm. So a lot of businesses would qualify for that. There's a couple of other things that aren't counted as well. So um, such as personal use assets. Uh, so yeah. you know yeah. boats and things yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. uh, the family home. Yep. And superannuation balances, that's pretty generous. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. You, know, you could have a uh, million dollar family home, you could have a million dollars each in superannuation. Yep. And, um, you know, let's say a million dollar boat, God knows why you'd <laughs> want that. But, 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 towards the, the, the net asset value test. It, it, it is an interesting one to me, this whole area, because like you said, it, it's seen as one of the most generous um, generous forms of tax savings available. And I, and I think it sort of flows through with everything because a lot of these, the fact that a lot of these definitions are a bit of a grey area and mm. it seems like a lot of things, as you step through it, they sort of err on the side of the taxpayer rather than the ATO, which mm. is not the normal way that it feels like in most other areas of tax. It's like if in doubt, the ATO wins in well, this area. It kind of seems to be that if, if it's a bit of a grey area, it's, like, well, you, you know, those assets aren't included. And what does it mean to say that it's in connection with retirement? Well, you can sort of it, get away with the Interestingly rate. enough, in the Eichmann case, yeah. the the lower courts ruled in favour of the ATO. Yeah. And I think it was, the, sorry, the full federal court, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, ruled in favour of the taxpayer and said, for the avoidance of doubt, yeah. in any future situation, um, it should be it should be ruled in favour of the taxpayer, not yes. the ATO. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, which is very interesting to me. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think that's... Um, I guess there's, there's... And, yeah, we've talked about, obviously, the title of the Small Business Capital Gains Tax Concessions. There, there are actually a few different ways. We've used one example here. Mm. Uh, the example we've used is, is using the 15-year exemption. Um, however, there are, and that's, I guess, where I say it's a really generous area of, of, of um, tax legislation because there are more than one. There is not just the one tax concession. Like yep. we've, we've talked about the 15-year exemption, but if, if you don't meet the criteria of this one, then there's, there's actually a couple of fallback ones as you go along, which is... Yeah, so this, this is a hard point to, to get across under a podcast as well because there's there's what Dallas is referring to there I I, I would probably call them levels yes um, level, yeah, yeah. levels so the yeah. first level to yes. look at is do I qualify under what's called the 15 year exemption yeah, yeah. and and um, so, re- so this is separate to all the other criteria, other criteria that we've talked about yeah. so basically let's assume that you've met those other criteria you've sold an active asset you've sold your business for you know um 
you, you've you've you have less than two million dollars turnover or less than six million dollars of net assets. Um, the the next the the first level of this that you'd want to qualify for would be the fifteen year exemption. So that's basically that you've owned. Uh, it says the asset, but let's 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 say the business. You've owned the business for longer than fifteen years. Yeah. Um, for a lot of people, when they're selling, they would have owned a business for longer than fifteen years, especially if they're selling it for a significant profit. I mean, not all the not all uh, not all the time. But um, fifteen years tends to fly by, and if you're if you're if you've been in business, you know, for for, for some of your life, and you're at the point in time where you're you're retiring, um, very often you would have had that business and had that asset for fifteen years yeah. uh, over that period of time. So um, uh, basically, what happens is that the to meet the fifteen year exemption, the CGT concession is. Uh, will exempt up to 100% of the capital gain from an active asset that a taxpayer has owned continuously for 15 years. Mm. Um, the Some other conditions are required, such as that the taxpayer must be at least 55 years of age in disposing of the assets in connection with retirement. So, yeah. And that, that's, I guess, a good, I actually have looked at this just recently with, with a client. Um, it's a good example of one where it's sort of a bit of a grey area because obviously being 55 years of age is not a grey area, but mm. disposing of the assets in connection with retirement, the, you mm. know, there's a lot of situations where there might be a partial sale of a business and it they might be continuing to run the business, yep. but the sale has been a part of a phased sort of sell-down strategy and, you know, depending on when the sale occurred and, and all those sorts of things, it can you can basically sell a part of the business or sell some of the assets you might not be fully retiring right now, but you might still be able to. That might still be deemed as being in connection with retirement. And that very situation, yeah, with yeah, a so with a farmer or a yeah, grazier, with, yeah, yeah. With, a, with a grazier that that was basically selling half their property, yeah. And um, that was that was the the criteria. It was it was. A, I won't go into all the detail, but we basically had to check. Um, yeah, they were, they were fifty five years of age. They've been running it for more than fifteen years, but they were only selling half of the yeah, about half of their property. Yep. So. That was the question. Was if you sell half the property, is that in connection with retirement? You know, what does it have? What do they have to? There's all criteria then about has there been substantial changes to their working situation, to the, all these sorts of things. So, but they for them it was um, obviously we went went to their accountant and, and they looked at that in in the great detail and they'd sort of they were able to access that, so they mm. they could meet that 15 year exemption even though they were continuing to to retain some of that yep. property. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a, that's where I, I guess I say the, the good thing about it is, um, so that's the 15-year exemption. Um, and so, sorry, before I go into the other examples that I've got here, I'll just let you finish that. So that yeah, so, so essentially if you qualify for the 15-year exemption, there, uh, to get money into superannuation, there's another, um, another figure advantage. that comes up, yep. which is called the lifetime CGT cap. And uh, that's actually right now. This gets indexed um, as we go, but in 2020-21, the the lifetime CGT cap is 1.56 million dollars yep. each yep. person yep. Um, that's qualifying. So, so what that really means is that up to 1.56 million dollars of the sale mm. can go, uh, un- if you meet the 15 year exemption, can yep. go straight into superannuation. So no tax paid on the capital gain yeah. uh, from that sale, and 1.56 million can go straight into superannuation. No taxes levied on the way in to superannuation. Yep. And, and the real hidden gem is that you've actually been able to get the money into superannuation yep. at that point in time. Yeah, um, so if you if you look at a husband and a wife yep. uh, that's that's structured as a partnership, or even if they're structured as a company and they own you know 50 percent of the shares each, basically. Um, they could they could have sale proceeds of the business of up to three uh, three point one two million, and and effectively then those sale proceeds one point five six million can go into each of their superannuation funds. Mm. Um, a you can get the money in. You'd never be able to get that amount of money in. Yeah. You know, without without this is, yeah. um, without this uh, concession. B is that um, there's no CGT to pay at all, no capital gains tax to pay. Yeah. C 
is that there's no 15% tax levied on the way into superannuation uh, because the money that just yeah. goes in yep. um, completely tax free. D is that you could already have significantly higher superannuation balances and you can get the money in. So you yeah, could normally so, normally there's a like with your with your non concessionals there's the, the total super balance um, issue there where once you get up to those limits which actually just go up to one point seven you can't make extra after-tax contributions into yep. super. But this, like you say, these sorts of contributions don't get caught up under that. So even if you've got $2 million in superannuation already, you can actually make more under these under these. So, um, so CGT concessions. that's a good example. The, the one I was going to use, they, this couple has done all the right things uh, as they've been running business for yep. 25 years. Yeah. Um, they've got two million dollars of superannuation balance each. Mm-hmm. They can th- normally they wouldn't be able to put in any money, yeah. um, and, and they actually wouldn't have been able to put in any money for a while yes. as a non-concessional contribution. Yep. That only it would have been able to put in each year their twenty five thousand dollars concessional mm-hmm. contribution. Um, they can pop one point five six million dollars straight into their superannuation yep. balance, yep. and they've got. Yeah, you know, three point five six million dollars each. Now yep. they wouldn't be able to open a pension. No, with, with that a, whole amount, like a superannuation income stream account based pension, mm-hmm. um, with any more than seven million dollars yep. from the first of July two thousand and uh, twenty one. Yeah. However, um, however, the rest of the money would be would be have a maximum rate that's of right. tax of of you know fifteen percent on that. And so that's, it's, that's, it's 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 it's. Really, really, it's a really, really generous one. And there's one. a bit of planning around that as well. With uh, I'm actually looking at that at the moment with a client where a couple um, potentially selling a property, and what we sort of want to do is build up one of their super balances right up to that total super balance mm-hmm. limit of it's about to go up to 1.7, and then push all of the sale proceeds in on on top of that bit. The, so there that are is, many ducks here, <laughs> and they need to be lined in a row. Is what you're trying to say to us here? <laughs> Not like, yeah, yeah. It, it is. Even that's within that. There's some planning around. Um, like if you're selling a business in phases, what you could actually what you could potentially do is sell a portion of it into, you know, basically direct some of the sale into into as non-concessional contributions into someone's account, then push some of these CGT contributions into their account to max out what you've got into there. And then flow it back across the other one. So I won't. That, that's probably well, going to blow a few minds. But well, what, there is some what, planning around what that we well. actually do um, yeah. when one of, when this seats one of our clients or a prospective client coming to see us, yeah. we lock ourselves in a room for at least a day, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a big writing pad. Yeah. yeah. And you you just you just you you're just strategizing. You've yeah. you've got this writing pad. You're drawing circles. You're drawing yeah. Yeah. cash going in here, and you you. Yeah. you, you you're getting everything in a row. Yeah. Um, you're you're scrubbing some yeah. steps yeah. and pushing them back because yeah. you have to to be able to make it all flow through. So yeah. it's, it's it's all Very about well. it's all about bolting it all together yeah. and actually getting it into the right. And and uh, that's um uh, the, 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 the basically getting all those steps in a row because if you make what you're referring to there, yeah. If they if they pull the trigger on the small business capital gains tax, yeah. And get that money in first, yes. up to this one point five six million dollars each, and then sell a passive property. Yep. That yep. they can't get that money into it's superannuation super, yeah. at that point yeah, in time. Exactly. If they do it the other way around, yes, they sell the passive property first. Yep. They can get that money into superannuation, and then uh, they they sell yes the business exactly. assets. Yep. And, and, and are able to use on that on yeah. top of that money that's already gone in. I always laugh. People must be listening to this thinking. Because we're now getting really excited about this. You go, people must be thinking, you guys need to get a life. But this is this, hey, this is, is really our idea of a good time. It's, uh, this is a good time. This is <laughs> this is like so. Yeah, you know, on the sale of a three point one million dollar business. Yeah. Uh, if if the majority of that was capital gains, then yeah, you know, three point one two million dollars. Yeah. If you didn't qualify under this, yeah, yeah, you, know, you would you would you would effectively even if that gains halved because you've 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 yeah. owned it for longer than twelve months. Yeah, you've, had you've got you know one point five million dollars yeah. of of realised capital gain. You've got seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of capital gain each. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, let's call that 
Let's call that about. Let's let's round it off at about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in tax, tax to seven hundred thousand yes. dollars of tax. Right. So huge. So tax. so you could you could volunteer that yes. to the ATO. Yeah. Or you could do it this way yeah. and keep it all. Yeah. <laughs> and keep it all. Yeah. But not only keep it all, get it into the most tax effective pay no tax. environment yeah. um, for yeah. your retirement, which is superannuation. Uh, and just to and so that's a good point. Is like we touched on it before when we sort of. Um, went back into the 15-year exemption. There's levels of this. So the 15-year exemption is one level that's available mm-hmm. to you. If you don't meet the criteria of the 15-year exemption, there are other CG, small business mm-hmm. CGT concessions available. So, for example, there's the 50% active asset reduction, mm-hmm. which is that you can reduce the capital gain on an active asset by 50%, which is in addition to the, the 50% discount for owning an asset for more than 12 months. Yep. There's a uh, retirement exemption. So even if you don't meet the, the more onerous criteria of the 15-year exemption, um, you, can, you can be exempt up to a limit of $500,000 uh, under the retirement exemption. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a rollover relief as well. So to give you an example, I've got um, clients who are looking at selling a cattle property for, for $7 million. And so again, same thing. They were looking at selling it, but they went, well, we just, we're gonna, we've bought it years and years and years ago for a, a very small uh, amount of money compared to what they were going to sell it for. We, we want to sell it, but we, pro- we feel like we can't because we're going to pay a huge whack of tax. Now, mm. What we essentially worked out was they could sell the whole asset for, sell that asset for $7 million, and once you applied the 50% 12-month discount, the 50% active asset reduction, then use the retirement exemption for each member of the couple, it completely wiped all of the mm. capital gain that, yep. that they would have been paying. So yeah, and this, and this is this was an example where they they didn't actually they didn't. own that asset for. Well, it's they been under they, fifteen years. They weren't fifty five years of age, and they weren't fifty five. So yeah, sure. So they weren't fifty five years of age. So they couldn't meet the fifteen year exemption. Yep. Which, as you say, the levels of it are that if you can meet the fifteen year exemption, you you you'd probably just do that first. Yeah. Uh, if you can't, there's there's a lot of the other levels, levels to fall back to. So, so we might that. come back with a part B of this with yeah. the other levels, but what we'll do first is see how many people have listened to this one. <laughs> if we, if, if, there's, <laughs> if, if there's we get ten percent of the normal listeners that we get, then we'll know. Okay. Well, it's 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 a funny one. This one because even if there's only one listener yes. to this topic, yep. um, it could it very well save difference. them hundreds of thousands of dollars of, yes, of capital right. gains tax. So, yep. um, look, if you if you if this is something that um, uh, is uh, applicable to your situation. You do run a small business, small to medium business. Yep. Um, you do want to uh, sell at some stage in the future. Mm. Certainly, certainly feel free to book a meeting with us. Yeah. Reach out to us at podcast at mo five zero dot com dot au. Yeah. Um, this is one of the situations where we work hand in hand with people's accountants because there's a really, really important role the accountant plays and there's a really, really important a, role that we that's play a great, here. great point, Michael. I think that the, what I've seen when looking at this with clients is that, and we've talked about this before, even the best accountants are focused, tend to be focused on how to minimise that tax in that mm. year. And yes. So I've seen a lot of this where, like you were saying, we lock ourselves in a room and, and strategize for a day about how do we minimise the capital gains, but how do we also get as much as possible into that tax advantage environment? How do we take advantage of all these different limits that are available to each member of a couple, all those sorts of things? Even I, I find that even a really good accountant should be liaising with the financial advisor or the, the good financial advisor should be liaising with the accountant around yeah. not just how do we minimise the capital gains now because you know, we've seen this a heap of times where people come in and go, my accountant has said that I've, I've met this criteria i won't pay any tax yep well that's great but that's only one part that's, of the puzzle well, well to use that example yeah a three point you know a three point one two million dollar business has been sold yeah and the accountant says okay we can exercise the 15 year exemption yep. you pay no tax you pay no tax on that yep. but it stops there yes and we go, okay well that's fine i get three point one two million dollars but i have to invest that now in my own name or yep. names and yes. i'm going to pay a lot of tax on that on because it's going to be taxable right. income yep Part B of that is where we say no, we'll, we'll, because it's not a requirement to put that money into superannuation. No, that's at right. that, uh, if you're exercising the 15 year yep. um, uh, uh, exemption, yes, we say okay, well, it's it's it, yeah. Number one, that's that's save the capital gains tax. Mm. Part B of this, the hidden gem, is that if we can now get that money into yep. superannuation and pay zero dollars in tax on that, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, assuming you yeah you know, you've you've you well not assuming anything. Um, if that was your sole Balance yes. in superannuation, which it is for a lot of small business people, they yeah. they haven't put much money into superannuation. That's right. 
they both get one point five six million dollars into superannuation. They've only got a hundred thousand dollar balance each in yeah. this example. Yeah. Um, all of that can go into zero percent tax yes. pension phase. Yeah, and that's, that point that's exactly right. That's the that's that's the exact example that I had with that uh, with those clients I was talking about recently that mm. uh, that sold the asset in con- and was it was it in connection with retirement or not? Yeah, that was yeah they hadn't been putting money in super so that they one of the that was exactly what we what we could do there and that was they had talked to their accountant and their accountant had said you won't you won't pay any tax on this but mm. like we said it was then about going well. You could save that tax now, but we also need we we're using that. That's I guess the big thing with why these concessions are available is that for most people who have been running a, a small or medium business, all of their energy, all of their finances, everything has been tied up in that business. And mm. so what you're effectively doing is you're selling that asset. You, you then need you need that you need that money to get dressed and, and get up and go to work for you. <laughs> I'm finally going to say it. <laughs> and and you want that to be done in the most tax effective way moving forward. Mm. So it's really about. Uh, like you say, bolting it all together and getting all those pieces working in together. Good place to wrap up. Thanks for listening today.